morning, Valder. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining me here in Dallas, Texas on the Valder BB Show. Thank Delighted. you for having us. I want my audience to know I'll be speaking to Dr. Gottlieb and Marie this morning. We're going to talk about a subject that doesn't get enough attention, HIV. Dr. Gottlieb, thank you so much, and I'm going to start with you from a medical perspective. Usually I start with women because women are first in my world, but I'm going to start with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to start with you today. I'd like you to lay the foundation to give us a synopsis of what HIV is because everybody thinks that once we start hearing the term, we think we know everything. Well, sure, I'll give it a try. Uh, HIV is a virus that attacks the immune system mm. and attacks a particular cell of the immune system called the T cell. And when it works its damage on the T cells over many years, it can cause a depletion of them and can lead to a person being predisposed to serious infections, which we call opportunistic infections. And when they get those, or when their T cell count falls below a magical number of 200, that's when they're considered to have the disease that we call AIDS. Okay. So today, what do you want us to know? Because we're not talking about HIV, I don't think, as, as we were at one time. Right. Uh, as a result of the advances in treatment, uh, people with HIV can live uh, a relatively normal life as long as they take their medication. And uh, people have a much improved quality of life. The other thing folks should know is that today, 25% of the people living with HIV in the United States are women. That is correct. Let me ask you, are people no longer fearing the disease because there is medical treatment for it? Well, I think there's a little bit of worry that youth in particular uh, is less fearful of HIV mm -hmm. because they know that there is treatment. But I think uh, most people uh, know that HIV is something to avoid and that they would prefer to live their life without it. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to Marie. Let's get her perspective because I love to talk to people who's walked the walk. And Marie, they told me you've walked the walk. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. Tell so, me about your experience. Well, I agree with you. People are talking less about HIV and AIDS now, and it has become very complacent. So, you know, that is so very much why I have joined Merck's National HIV Campaign, which is aimed to empower people living with HIV to talk, to have open and honest conversations with their doctors and their healthcare team about how they are feeling and doing on their treatment. So we have to start sparking the conversation. Although everybody else may be forgetting about it, we as people that are living with HIV, we need to let people know we matter. And HIV, people are still getting infected and the stigma is still there. It is. Now, but I'm in Dallas, Texas. My show is global, but we're going to talk about my hometown. There's a, a, a segment of the population, everybody even knows where it is. Of course, you know, and I'm going to say it this way, it's low income, it's ethnic, and it has a high HIV population. And you get a chance to talk to them today, Marie. What would you say? Well, what I want to say is that you need to know your status because if you are positive, treatment is the first step to to you regaining your health like I, you know, people say to me all the time, Maria, you look good, you look good. In the beginning, that was a hard challenge for me. I didn't go straight into care because of the stigma and the fear. I was in the music industry. I showcased artists. I, was, I knew people from Puffy to Jay-Z. And I was afraid for all of these people that I did business with to know that I then was living with AIDS. So it's so important and you need to know your status and don't be fearful and don't be afraid if you're HIV positive to ask for what you need. That's why this I Design campaign is so powerful that there that people can get help and they can be a part of that getting help. And so they can go to projectidesign.com and with their resources, they can download it. It's a mobile and desktop app. They can prepare, they can tra prepare themselves when they're going into the doctor's office, and they can track their own health. And that's very empowering. 
Thank you so much, Marie. You probably changed more lives with that conversation than you'll ever know. Dr. Um, Gatlett, sum this up for me with the campaign, the drug, and where to go again. Well, I think uh, it's critically important for people to, to emphasize HIV prevention. Mm -hmm. Getting back to your last point, there's a lot that people can do to avoid HIV. Uh, but people who do have HIV, there's been great advances in treatment. Uh, people are living longer. Uh, we haven't pointed out yet that uh, by 2015, 50% 50 of people living with HIV in America are going to be over the age of 50. They're going to have that whole host of medical problems that's associated with aging. So it is a success story, but not a total success story. And there's a lot of work left to be done both in treatment uh, and in diagnosis and testing. Uh, here at the U.S. Conference on AIDS, there's going to be an emphasis on the Affordable Care Act and, and what effect that's going to have on the HIV epidemic, which is likely to be a good effect, bringing more people into medical care. And I want to say another thing, too. You know, as women, we are the primary caregivers in our family. And a lot of times, I know with me, when I was first diagnosed, I neglected myself to the point that I became very, very sick. So we want women out there to know that you matter, we care, be vocal, ask for what you need, and go to that projectidesign.com if you're HIV positive, and use those resources and those tools. And it's also for healthcare providers, case managers. They can also encourage their patient or their client to go to that Project I Design website and empower them. That's very yeah. helpful to us, too, as doctors, because to have a patient come in prepared as a result of using some of these resources, it really saves time and makes the interaction with the medical team so much more effective. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Uh, Gatlett. I really want to thank the strong voice of Marie. And thank I want to you. thank Merck for, for yes, caring. Yes, I really want you. to thank them for just caring to make a drug that can help people. I want to thank you guys, too, for being on the Valder BB Show, because I know we made a difference today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.